They said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And although all of us are not in the walls of the church, those of you who are on Facebook and YouTube, and I'm not sure that we're actually on Terrence, can you give me some feedback? We're not on YouTube or Facebook, but hopefully we will be able to maybe put something out there. Amen. Uh, we have had some difficulty with cable. Our cable company is telling us that they're going to have to dig from across the street, bring the wires across the sidewalks, and so, so that we can have proper cable. Um, over the last two or three weeks, we have been having trouble with cable, but um, it appears that we will need to actually have some work done by Spectrum in order for us to be able to broadcast. So if you have friends and family who are on Facebook or YouTube and you know they come in that way, please let them know. And we'll do our best, too, to let people know this week. We'll send out an email saying we're sorry, but, you know, our broadcast did not work properly as it should be. But you know what? With all things, we have to trust God. And so we will move forward with our services. We are happy that each and every one of you are here. We are thankful. And now um, I have a few announcements that I need to make. If you have a shoebox and you have not brought it to the front of the church, it's okay. We're going to pray for those shoeboxes, whether they are in the pulpit or wherever they are. We know that when they leave this place that they will be blessed. So if you have a shoebox and you need a label on the shoebox, we do have our labels, and they are in the North X in the vestibule of the church. You may get, get that from our greeter, Monica, who is out there greeting everyone as they come into the, the door to put on it whatever size it is. And if you have one that you want to just bring forward, it's okay. You can bring it forward anytime during the service. Also, your 2022-23 pledge forms, we have some that are actually in the North X of the building. If you would like to fill those out and put them in the offering plate, we will take those as well. And not only this Sunday, but in the, um, in the time to come, you may also make sure that you put your pledge card in, in the mail, or actually you may call to the church as well so that we will know how to start working on our budget for 2023. But in saying that, God has certainly been faithful. And even though people have not written it on a pledge card, they have been faithful to their giving here at the Presbyterian Church of the Cross. And for that, I can certainly say that we are certainly grateful. Also, there is a list of special members and friends that's also available in the fellowship hall, in the vestibule, the North X. You may get those, uh, that listing so that you can send cards or special greeting to those who are not feeling well in their bodies or who have lost their loved ones and just need to know that you think about them and you care about them in all things. Amen. And so today we are grateful to be here this morning. I will tell you that all of us are kind of off today, amen? I woke up at 2.30 thinking I had slept all night long and went to bed at 11. And my mom is with me, she woke up at 3.30. So our house was moving around, I did her hair and you know, all that kind of stuff because she's gonna be leaving me today. But uh, not, to, not to, to say that, but all of us, we talked about it in Sunday school. Some people got up at 3.30, some got up at four, it's just a lot going on when we have a time change. But thanks be to God. We woke up this morning, clothed in our right mind. God has started us on our way. We are here to worship and we are certainly grateful. Amen? Amen. So now let us call ourselves to worship. Mary, do I have any other announcements? Okay, all right, amen. Let us call ourselves to worship. I will tell you, after the church service today, we will invite you to come over to the fellowship hall. We're having a potluck today, and so we would invite you to come over and have a fellowship with us, and we're gonna fellowship probably over some Kentucky Fried Chicken. I bought some barbecue from good old Rocky Mount Downey's barbecue and coleslaw, and we're just gonna have a good time together. This is what we do 
on Stewardship Sunday. And Stewardship Sunday is about your talent and what it is, not only monetary, but what it is that God has gifted you with. And how will you share that with your community? And so we're just going to fellowship one with another today. Amen. Let us call ourselves to worship. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. For the Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. So in Christ Jesus, God moves towards us with open arms, uh, welcoming our confessions and offering a, a fresh start. So together, as we seek God's forgiveness in this time and in this space, let us worship God in spirit and in truth and worship God together. So join me now for the prayer of confession. Gracious God, you call us to faithful living, giving ourselves to you and to one another after the example of Jesus. Yet sin prevents us from following your directions. We pursue our own goals. We worship our own gods and place our hope in things that cannot last. But Lord, please wash us anew. Lord, forgive us again and again and again. And give us ears to hear your call and faith to follow where Christ leads. So God, we stand firm in the gospel and we stand firm in your goodness and your mercy. We stand firm and we are refreshed by your refreshing love. So God, we are thankful today that we are forgiven and that there is good news to be shared with one another. And because of the love and the way that you give to us, we should so freely give back to you. So God, we confess now our sins blot anything out God during this particular time in our lives so that we can hear a word from you be with us Lord on this stewardship Sunday not for anyone to feel less than or more of but God for us to share in our diversity and in our diversity we share in unity together so God we thank you for the equality that is within us and between us and so, Lord, on this day, we give you all the honor, the glory, and the praise. And Lord, although we may be concerned about the people who were not here over the internet, we ask a special blessing for them, for they not be worried or hurried about anything, God, but go and reach into their homes, God, to let them know that you are present with them, even though we are not in their homes today that they will find a word, God, that is out there that will speak to what it is that is going on in their lives. So I pray a special prayer this morning for the people who are on Facebook and YouTube who would like to be here, for those who are sick and shut in, God, for those who are grieving the loss of their loved ones, for that table that is not filled any longer. I ask your special blessing this day. Be with us, God. Lead us and guide us through this service. And we will always be careful to give you all the honor, the glory, and the praise. All these wonderful things we ask in your precious name. Amen and amen. At this time, we normally pass the peace by getting up and we move around, and, but we're still in pandemic mode. And so we wave to one another from where we are, send a smile, turn around, tell somebody, hey. Yes, amen. We thank God for all of you who are with us today. Um, we have uh, a guest today. Gary is here with his lovely wife today to bless us and to share his talent with us. And we get so excited, Gary, when you are with us. We thank God for the way in God is moving in your life and that you are able to be with us. We give God praise for your presence this morning, amen, and for your lovely wife, we give God praise for her. And the way in which she asked me today, is everything all right with me too? And yes, everything is well, amen. Also for Terrence who is with us today, I know he is 
dealing with his um, parents and his wife who are not well in their bodies, but we give God all the praise for you, Terrence, for you being here with us. We are thankful to you. Amen. And not to be hurried or worried about us not being online, but God's going to take care of that too. Amen. Because I know he's been in the tears of this morning. Let's give Terrence a hand clap of praise. Because I know that it gets to him when things are not working the way that they should, but it's all right. It's going to be all right. Just like I told Mary, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be all right. Amen. We've been here this week, and Mary's been here trying to get things done, and the Internet has been in and out. But all in all, we have been able to get the things done when we need to get done. And Mary, so we thank God for you and your patience. Amen. Amen. We have some guests with us today. And um, one is my very good friend, Frances Jackson, who is with us from Charlotte, amen. Let's give her a hand clap of praise. We are thankful she came right in here and started trying to work with Terrence to get that internet going, amen. Any other guests that we have among, I didn't want to put her on the spot, but I did. Any other guests that we have among us, come on. Come on, young man, raise your hand and stand up and tell us who you are. All right, all right. We thank God for you. Let's give Joel a hand clap of praise and camera. We thank God. That's right. Let's raise the roof on that. We also thank God for Leatrice and Jason and Ethan who are with us today. Come on, raise your hand. She sings for us all the time, but I got to tell you something special. Come on, stand up, Leatrice. I got to put you on the spot. Leatrice finished her Master's of Science. Amen. Um, amen. That's a hand clap of praise of that. And also with that, you know Liz just always blesses us uh, during our holidays or whenever I ask her to sing. Amen. And so she has released her first single called Shadow. And so we would like for you to support Leatrice because Leatrice always supports us. And so she has a song called Shadow that is released, it is on YouTube. You will see her picture when you go out there. So we would encourage you to um, buy her record and support her because she has a talent and she's willing to share it, amen? Not only with the church, but with the world. And so we have a recording artist that is among us, amen? And so we thank God for that. We thank God, so let's give her. Amen. Amen. We celebrate all that each and every one of you are doing, and Leatrice, we celebrate you. But again, for those of you who were not here, after church, potluck, um, dinner, right after church for Stewardship Sunday. Amen. All right, stand to your feet, and we're going to sing, There's a Sweet, Sweet Spirit in This Place, and that can be found in your blue hymnal that is in your pew on page 398. Let us sing to the glory of God.
Give yourselves a hand clap of praise. Amen. At this time, I will move to these boxes. This is our Christmas celebration this year. We prayed and we believe that this is what it is that God will have us to do. And that is to share Christmas with people who are over the waters. People who may not get any Christmas or any joy uh, during the season. And so we felt like we asked the congregation to pick a box, fill the box up based upon the ages, and the ages range from 2 to 14. And everyone was to fill that box, to have it so that people would know the Presbyterian Church of the Cross was thinking of them during this holiday season. And so we are thankful. That we had 28 boxes that have been filled by our congregation and friends of this congregation. And so for that, we are certainly grateful. And so today, as um, Stewardship Sunday, we wanted to pray over these boxes as they go across the waters to make someone smile or a child happy. And so I would ask for you to just stretch your hands forward. As I pray now over these boxes that will, that will move and be a gift to someone. So, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your grace and for your mercy. We thank you, God, for our neighbors, whether they are across the street or in this Greensboro community, all over the United States as well as the world. Because, God, you said in your word, you created us in your image that we are certainly grateful. So all of us belong to you. And so God, for these boxes that will move and have their way into the spirit and the hearts of the children who will receive them. Allow them to be a blessing. Allow them to leap for joy, God. Allow them to have something in any of these boxes that they've never seen before that will open up their mind and their heart for something that they never thought they could think of or do. And so, God, we are grateful. Not only are we grateful for the, for the students and the, the kids who will receive these boxes, God, but for those who will get these boxes where they need to be delivered. For their tenacity, God, and their dedication to make sure that they get across the waters. And God, not only that, but we thank God for each and every individual who placed something in this box today. That they found it their way, God, to be able to want to share with somebody else. Oh God, it is a vicious circle. All of us are doing together. All of us are a community. And so we are grateful. For, so for this Samaritan's first Christmas, allow it to be very special for the kids who will receive this and for their parents. May they have a sense of joy as well. That there is a seed that has been planted in the ground. That seed has grown and not only has it grown in their community, but it's grown all over the world. That there are people in the world that think of somebody else. So God, today we are grateful. These boxes were blessed when they came in. And God, they will be blessed as they go. And God, they will be a blessing as they are received. So God, we look to you for the good news. God, we look to you for everything. Because you own everything. God, we love you. Because you gave for us the spirit of giving. And for that, we are most grateful. And in that spirit of giving, God, you gave to us your son, Jesus, who died a harbor death on the cross to save us from our sins. And for that, we are most grateful. Amen and amen. Amen. There is a word today 
that is taken from Matthew 25, 14 through 30. Now, I see you fanning in here. Can we get some air condition, Frank? Can you help me, Frank? First do, amen. I don't want you to be hot in here. But you do have a lovely fan that you can use and take home. But our scripture lesson today is taken from Matthew 25, verses 14 through 30. And it's the parable of the talents. And today I talk to you about Stewardship Sunday. But hear the words of the Lord, and it is in your pew Bible. Matthew 25, 14 through 30. For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them, to one who gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents, but the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been worthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I made two more talents. His master said to him, well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward saying, Master, I know that you were a, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, you wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers and on my return, I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the 10 talents. For to all those who have, more will be given and they will have an abundance. But with those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The word of God for the people of God. I have two sermon topics. Is that not amazing? Are you trusting God with your talent? And where are you digging holes? Are you trusting God with your talents? And where are you digging holes? The word of God for the people of God. At this time, Gary will render us a selection and then we will move forward with the word of God for today. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
how great thou art. If you would just keep playing that for me as I render a prayer of illumination. Oh Lord, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. Thank you, God, for your word today. Thank you, God, for your message today. We thank you, God, that this word will go forth with power. So God, we ask that you break open this vessel so that I may surrender to your will and to your way. Oh, how great you are in all the earth. For that, we are certainly thankful. So Lord, hide me behind the cross today. Hide me so far behind the cross that these lips of clay, God, are used as a sweet, sweet instrument and melody for you. For we've been blessed today with the people that are here. We've been blessed today in song. And so, God, may your word go forth with power. Be with me. Lead me and guide me so that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will, may it be acceptable in your sight oh Lord you are my strength and my redeemer be with us Lord for this time what are we doing with our talents or are we digging holes be with us Lord amen and amen This message is a powerful message to each and every one of us. Sometimes Stewardship Sunday can be uncomfortable, but I say to you that I, that is not my plan for any of you because the same way I trust God, I know that you do. But I want to start out with a quote from Tim Hansel that said, one of the reasons why mature people stop growing and learning is that they become less and less willing to risk failure. This parable is the third in a series of four of Jesus' tales in Matthew about the end of time. And as Jesus nears Jerusalem and the final event that will lead him to the cross, the tension of the journey is tense and there is a sense of urgency and importance. And here Jesus expresses what he hopes and expects of them after he is gone while they wait for the coming again. This is not only a parable for people of then, but it is a parable for us as followers of Jesus Christ. This is a parable of followers who are faithful to Jesus Christ. And it is a time when we do not see firsthand how it's done, but there's a parable that tells you about what the actions were. This parable is about not only the people of that time, but it's about you and me. As we go and dive into this deeper, we need to understand something about talent. You see, during that time, talent was worth 15 years wages for a working man. Talent came into the English language in the Middle Ages as a term for God's given abilities and graces. Let me say that again. 
talent came into the English language in the Middle Ages as a term for God-given abilities, gifts, and graces. So talent is not just about money. God can find no use for a talent with a shut mind. Warren Riserby said, talent represents opportunity to use our abilities. There are no religion without adventure. And that's a lesson in faith. We adventure when we believe that God is faithful and we step out on faith. That is when we explore or we chance the adventure. And so God gives us different talents, just as the slave, five talents for some, two talents for some, one talent. But how will we use the talent is the question. You see, humans are not equal in talent. And I have to say that God has a sense of humor because I had not planned to do Sunday school this morning but I had to. And so we got in there and we started talking about diversity and unity and equity and being equal. But humans are not given equal talent, but you can be equal in effort. You get that? These servants were faithful with a few things, therefore the Lord entrusted them with many things. Basically, this lesson is whatever talent we have, we must use it for the service of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Just this morning, I spoke about the fact that Leatrice comes here and she sings for us. Whenever I say, Leatrice, you're going to help us out, and she sings. But not only that, God is taking that talent, and she's listened to the call of Jesus Christ on her life, and now she has an album or a single to share with the world. And I said album, because that is to come. The reward of work well done is still more work to do. Isn't it ironic? The harder we work, the more there is work to get done. The servant who had done well was not told to lean back and rest because they had done well. They are given greater tasks and responsibilities in the work of the master because the one talent that came back was given to, to the, the one that had five and the one that had two. There was more work to get done. Do we use our gifts and talents or are we afraid to move forward thinking that failure is only a hand away? It is incumbent of us to labor faithfully until Jesus comes. We should be watching and witnessing and working. We may not be successful in the eyes of humankind or even with others or people that are in our circle, but we are faithful and profitable because we know that our reward is in heaven. In other words, we should not be worried about what our neighbor thinks about all the things that we're doing because God's hand is upon us. And each and every one of us have a call from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And it is up to us and our responsibility to answer the call. This man traveling to a far country is, is Jesus Christ. He's going away to a far country. He's on his way to Jerusalem. And as a matter of fact, Jesus has gone now for over 2,000 years, and that's a, a long time, but we will remember to see what his servants has done with the talents he has left us with. 
The story reminds us that he gave. This is a story about preaching on a scripture in reverse of just talking about tithes and offering, but rather for us to collect ourselves within ourselves and mind out our gifts and our talents that God has given us and think about evaluating and examining ourselves to what the call is on our talents by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Several weeks later, the pastor got up to preach his sermon on the, the parable of the talents. And the congregation felt uncomfortable. And so, there's a story about what this pastor did. This pastor gave out a collection plate with $10 bills in it. And he told people to take out a $10 bill. And so he introduced the sermon. And he invited people the next Sunday to stand and tell everybody what they had done with their $10. Some still had it in their purse or their billfold. Some had used it to buy groceries. Some had given it to, away to someone else in need. One man had brought some stock in a certain company, and in just a few weeks he had made $40, and so he gave it back to the church. So as this pastor was going around asking people about what they did with their $10, he went on to preach his sermon, but his point had already been made, that when we use our talents and our gifts, regardless of whether it is money or that gift of song or that gift of giving or that gift of sharing with others or that gift of media or that gift of play. We are making an investment in somebody else. So when you use your talents, it's not just about you getting back more than what it is, but it's the giving out that makes the difference in the world. We're making an investment in somebody else. We're making an investment in our community. We're making an investment, as Gary did today, in this church. We're making an investment in the talent that Jesus Christ has given us. Today in Sunday school, we talked about this community of people who gave all of their possessions away. They sold it. And they gave it to the community and the people who were with them based on their need not based on their wants, but on their needs. And the fact is that everybody did not get the same. But because they are a community, a loving community that came together, they realized that they had unity in their diversity and they wanted to help each other out. How many of us? Look at what it is that God has poured into our spirit and into our hearts that we can share with one another. And we contemplate and we think about how do I share that talent? But the beautiful part of this is this. We cannot be afraid to make an investment, to make a risk, because what we believe in our minds may be a failure, but to God, it is good news. You see, God has a way of taking our failures of which we think are our failures and turning it into that which is good. And so, yes, stewardship is a hard conversation because a lot of times when we talk of stewardship, we only talk of money. But today, that is not what thus says the Lord. 
God said, look at you as the creature that I have made you to be. Mind out what your gifts and your talents are. Examine and evaluate what it is that I have given you. And think about how will I share it with someone else? Because when you share it with someone else, that is certainly the gospel. And the gospel itself is good news. God, in his infinite wisdom, had a plan for every single individual that was created in his image. Oh yes, there's a plan for you, and there's a plan for you, there's a plan for you, Caroline. There is a plan and a purpose for each and every one of us. And so go with your plan. Ask God, I know you created me for a purpose, but I don't want to dig any holes around me. Because if I dig too many holes around me, I won't be able to get out of the space in which I'm in without hurting myself and hurting other people. Therefore, I'm not going to dig any holes around me. I'm going to spread it all out. I'm going to give it to somebody else. Because I'm going to trust and believe in Jesus Christ with my talents. Although it may not look like you want it to look, it may not seem like you want it to seem, but God is doing a work in each and every one of you. And you've got to trust that. And no, stewardship is not about the money. Because certainly, if God is working through you, if you are opening yourself up, with your gifts and your talents, then everything that comes from that will be what it is that God will have it to be. And we have to be faithful and we have to trust God that God is doing a good work. So today, it's funny that the sermon here is on paper, but that's not what's in my spirit today. When it comes to stewardship, ask yourselves, what is God saving me from and saving me for? Because whatever it is that God is saving you for, it's those gifts and those talents that were poured into you when you were knitted in your mother's womb. And now all you have to do is say, God, I surrender because I want to share those gifts and I want to share those talents with the world. This week, there was a young lady who comes to church and she had an exam that she had to take on last week. And she was worried about this exam that she had to take. So God allowed us to meet in different paths, not in the walls of the church. And so we talked about her study and her, her study plan. And so God does not make any mistakes because what that did was it brought it back to remembrance so that on that good Saturday morning, before she got ready to take that exam, I was able to wake up and send her a prayer telling her everything was going to be all right and not to be worried about this test because God has her and she will, if she has to take it a thousand times, no one will ask how long you had to take that test or how many times you took that test. But the test has been passed and you will be able to move forward with your gifts and your talents that God has poured in you that you so freely want to share with somebody else. On last evening, I said to Leatrice, I said to her, I didn't even know you were in school. I said, I, I feel some kind of way 
about asking you to sing and learn all these songs that you've learned over this past year or so. And you still got your studies done and you received your masters and you never said a word as a him or a high said, how I can get this done, I don't know if I'm gonna be, but you said yes. And so therefore God said yes to you. And so what it is that we are to do and this is my, my challenge to you about stewardship. Don't think about the money. The money will come. PCC has been blessed and highly favored. No, the statements don't look like what it seems. But when you look back at all the things and the accomplishments that have been made over the 50 some years that we've been here, over, even over the last year. God has been faithful to us because we haven't really concentrated on the money. We've been concentrating on sharing our gifts and our talents with people who come into the walls of this church, with people who are in our neighborhood, with people who are hungry, with people who need clothing, with people who need food, with people who need shelter. And God has certainly blessed us to be able to do that for somebody. And so, as we move forward from this day, as we bless these boxes that are going farther than what we could ever think or even imagine, God's been good to us. Why? Because we ain't been digging no holes. And I know that ain't good English, but we ain't been digging no holes. We're not standing in the same place, but we are planting for other folk so that they can get where they need to be. We are pouring into other folk so they can get where they need to be. And what have we been doing? We've been using our gifts and our talents. And for that, we have to give God all the honor, the glory, and the praise. Amen and amen. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for your word today. I trust you. I appreciate you. I'm impressed with you. You see, first impressions are lasting impressions. And so God, we thank you for making it last forever. So we thank you today on this Stewardship Sunday that you said a word that was totally different than the word you said this morning. But for that I am certainly grateful because perhaps we needed to hear that we all have gifts and talents and that we're not afraid. And though it may not look like it's supposed to look, that we're trusting you with what we have. We're not digging holes around us and staying in the same place. We're moving forward, God, because we believe in you. We look to you. We look to you for your grace and for your mercy. And God, that you sit on the, Jesus, your son, sit up on the right hand of the Father Almighty. And for all the great clouds of witnesses that have gone before us, God, that they sit at your feet and they are praying about each and every one of us, our, 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 our mothers, our fathers, our, our sisters, our brothers, our aunties, our uncles, God, they are at your feet in that great cloud of witnesses. But God, we have a challenge here. That we look at what it is that you poured into each one of us. To use our gifts and our talents to glorify you. So God, today be with us. We all have stewardship. Oh, it's not about the money because you're going to bless us. We trust that. 
So be with us today on this Stewardship Sunday to know that we are diverse, but we have unity. And that, that unity is in you. And so God, for the college students that are in this place today, add a, a special blessing for them. We're going into the holiday season. Some of them cannot get home. But let them know, God, that they have a home here in this community where people will take care of them as they move forward now into this exam season that is right around the corner as they prepare themselves, God, provide for them peace, a peace that passes all understanding. For our grade school students, God, they're going through a lot as well, but we ask a special blessing for them that you are with each and every one of them and us. Because God, even as adults, we need you. We are your children. So be with us, build community with us and within us so that we're able to give to somebody else and we'll do it with a cheerful heart, with gladness, God, that we will do what it is that we can to help somebody else. So Lord, mind us out. Help us to know and understand our talents. And we will be careful to share those talents with somebody else. Lord, we give you all the honor, the glory, and the praise for your good news. Amen and amen. At this time, I have two ask. One is if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that you will say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. I want to be in your family. I want to be sealed by baptism. If you haven't been baptized, I want to be a part of your family, that family that you are coming back for. I want to be in that community of people who will love me and that will help me grow and nurture me as I move forward, believing and trusting you. So that is my first ask. And my second ask, if you would like to be a member of the Presbyterian Church of the Cross, we are looking and we are standing with our arms wide open as well, ready to receive you into this ministry. And we're going to do our best to pour in to you so that whenever you come through those walls or whatever we're doing in the community, you feel a part and you feel good about the ministry that which you share in. And so we would ask that you will let us know by calling our church office. That number is 336-274-5467. You may let Mary know, myself, or any church member that is here as you fellowship with us. First, I want to be a child of God. Second, I want to be a part of the Presbyterian Church of the Cross. And we are forever grateful. I say to each of you, I thank you for the way in which you contribute to this church. You may give by GiveLify, Presbyterian Church of the Cross. You may give by Cash App, dollar sign, PresbyCC, dollar sign, P-R-E-S-B-Y-C-C. We thank God that we have um, greeters here, and you know where the um, collection plates are in the church if you would like to leave your monetary gift. We thank God for the way in which you give to this church. Let us be good stewards of everything that we have. And no, it's not always about money. The money will come because God will work through us from the inside out and you will give according to your conviction and what God has asked of you. So I thank each and every one of you for being here today. I thank you, Gary. I thank you, Terrence. I thank you, Monica and Kelly, who are our greeters that greeted you at the door. I ask that this time, if you would stand, we're gonna go straight over to the fellowship hall. We're gonna have our grace and we're gonna eat and fellowship and have a grand time. How about that? <laughs>